Hi, uh, this is Dan, uh, Dan Victor Does. Uh, hi, I'm an artist and I'm bipolar. Uh, I actually just had a revelation uh, just now uh, that I, I kind of realized that, you know, you kind of think about your life's purpose. What is your purpose? What is your goal? Why do you do what you do? And I think sometimes, uh, I'm waiting for my coffee, by the way. Sometimes you, um, you know, you don't know why you do things. And I think sometimes we spend the majority of our lives trying to f f figure out why we do the things we do and what our real motivations are, what do we want, who we are. So I was like thinking about, I've been very motivated by pop culture, by movies, um, to become curious about consuming other things. And I've seen the relationship to um, sociology and, uh, and popular content. Uh, you know, I, I think the internet has helped break, break some of that shit down. Oh, here, <laughs> uh, has, has broken some of that shit down so that you, um, oh shit, it's hot. Uh, uh, you know, so you can kind of identify things. It helps you to organize, it, you know, you have labels, you have folders, you have so many things. And the, the revelation that I had about myself in terms of, uh, you know, becoming more self-aware is uh, that my true goal, I thought it was to be a musician or be an artist, and I, I, I realized that that's not it. Then I went back and I said, my first idol was Thomas Edison. And uh, you know I thought I wanted to be an inventor, which I actually did, but I saw his workshop, okay? I went to his workshop and that's what inspired me, not necessarily a story or being an inventor that he invented a light bulb. I saw his workshop and I was like, holy shit, this is a machine of creativity. I wanna do that and I wanna be innovative in a way that affects everyone, you know, in a positive way. That I think was the key thing about, about my love for Thomas Edison. Not the fact that he was a better inventor, took credit for the light bulb and Tesla did it. That has nothing to do with my admiration for him. Um, you know, he facilitated a, a place in which those ideas could thrive, the same as Walt Disney. Now, Walt Disney is another hero of mine um, that I've been studying, uh, you know, his life. And he really, his life resonates with mine because it's like, you know, you can suffer and still be a good human being. You know what I mean? Like, your suffering doesn't have to justify, uh, you know, a bad behavior. You know, um, you can recognize that even if you do do it, then you can sort of see that that's not right. But Anyway, like the, the motivation of videoing this or taking this uh, at this particular moment right away is that I realized my goal in life is to be a, uh, a conductor. Uh, and, and I don't mean in a sense of a, um, an orchestra. I mean a conductor in terms of a, a conduit. Uh, you know, conduit's probably better, a better word, but I, I do mean in the sense that I orchestrate that connection uh, that you know, to the, to the extent that I'm involved, you know what I mean? And then something that's meant to, you know, evolve on its own, you know, for something that habits, you know, something that should have its independence free of, you know, influence. Uh, but, uh, the thing was, is that I believe I saw something and that, that site was like, okay, well we, um, I watched Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. I don't know. Have you ever, have you guys ever seen Bill and Ted's excellent adventure? I have. I've, I've seen it many times. Okay. So Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is a movie, if you haven't seen it, about uh, these two rocker dudes who are rockers. Okay. See, that's the key thing. It's like, I thought I wanted to be a musician because of that. I wanted to be a musician because of that movie. You know, something strange is afoot at the surf, Circle K. These guys could not play music, but yet they could still be in a fucking rock band. That blew my mind. How are these guys, these ridiculously, you know, I mean, maybe they're cool dudes to hang out with. And I'm like, so I was like, wow, maybe that's what I, I, I thought of as an ideal. And the thing that really tickled me was that it was them... Uh, what was the word? Uh, they basically brought peace to the future. The future had come back to save these guys because they, you know, the eminent future, this beautiful future had been saved through music. And I thought that was so cool. So, so, you know, and, and their whole thing was, uh, you know, be excellent to one another and party on, dude. That has been my mantra for my whole life. And it's like, be good to one another, man. Like, how fucking hard is that? And apparently it is. But the idea is, is that if everyone is fulfilled, creating things that give them pleasure and give them joy and give them strength and, and inspiration to, to help pass that along and that inspiration along, 
I believe that there can be world peace. And, uh, you know, as I was watching that, it's like, it's kind of crazy because you think about your motivations for wanting this. And uh, all my life, I've been recording shit and I'm, I've been on people's court. I have like all of this, this crazy content that I haven't, you know, that I've previously had. And now the culture is in a place that can accept it and bite sized things. So I have tons of shit that I can share all, all along the way from fucking when I was 18. You know what I mean? I've been doing this for a very long time, but never understood what the purpose was until now. There's this amazing stories episode, uh, like I said, I've been inspired by pop culture and it always stuck with me. Mark Hamill, I believe, was the actor who played this man who who had all these toys from when he was a kid and, you know, around turn of the, turn of the century, 1900s, maybe 1910s. And this guy, this fairy, this fairy came up to him and said, hey, listen, it's like, and he loved his toys. I don't think it was so much the fact that it was toys than it was something he loved passionately, right? So this guy's like, oh man, I want to be rich. I have like kind of a, you know, my life isn't happy right now. But he's like, listen, you hate, you saved these toys. And now we know toys are collectibles. But at the time it was in the 80s and toys weren't. Not like that. But I think that it was like, anyhow, um, they, uh, <laughs> You know, they said he, he lived long enough and he saved all these toys and he got, he was homeless living out of this car. By the time he was like 80 or 70 or something, he had held on all to these toys his whole life. And then they, he saw their value and he saw their worth and somebody recognized it. That was the thing that was crazy is like after all of this time, nobody recognized his gift and his passion and his love for that, uh, his toys. Um, and it wasn't that they were extension of him. That was something that was his passion. That was what he, what, what gave him fulfillment. And now finally, finally, and it doesn't matter at what point in your life. I don't think that should validate or invalidate any success because what is the measure of it? It's of you, of recognizing where you are today, right now, every day, every way. And, um, I just, you know, I, I just have a lot of faith that, you know, my motivation now, I really recognize that I want to have a good effect on the world, not just because of, you know, some weird notion. It's just that I, I, I know that I have to have my suffering or anything that I've gone through have purpose and have meaning. Um, and I think the meaning is that I don't want to have and from, from my selfish reason, it's that I don't want to have had my experience be for nothing, you know, not just for the value of me getting it, you know, um, the value is in taking away what, uh, you know, just taking, taking something away from a situation. So you're not, so you're not left, oh man, I'm just in this pain. How do I guard myself from it? The thing is, is that sometimes you, you can't see how because you you don't have the perspective. But once you do, once you do, that is a choice. It's not the choice when you're not unaware. You don't have, I'm not saying an excuse, but you don't have the ability to even make the choice, right? And sometimes even given the choice, you don't have the strength to make the right choice or, or a choice that would benefit you more. Because again, right choice, wrong choice is not the point of, of, of evaluating your behavior or your action. It is saying that this is good to me, this is bad to me, this is helpful, this is harmful. It's not um, morally ethical and you challenge them and my God, they're, they're horrible people because they broke the law. That's, that's ridiculous. Um, no one is a horrible person. Uh, people have beauty within them. Hopefully we can have, help them shine if they can't. Then, you know, I, I don't know, that's the resolution to what to do with people who don't show you kindness and you can't be nice to them and being nice to them doesn't help, it only hurts you, but you still care about these people or, you know, it pains you to care about them, right? So what, you know, what you can, you have to resolve yourself to either just not having them in your life or not letting it matter, whether they are or you aren't, but that takes strength. That is not an easy thing to do. So I commend anyone who is making decisions in their lives that, that build, bring you out of your comfort zone, but d d d you know, you decide what that is and know what that is. Again, the reason I, I wanted to put this up is because I want to, I believe that music and creativity can help, uh, bring peace to the world. I believe if everyone is fulfilled with their basic needs and needs of fulfillment, no matter what money bracket you're in, I think it'll bring an end to the value of money because like the thing, 
if you if everyone is given the ability to do exactly what makes them happy and the thing is that there's somebody who does what what everything that needs to be done in the world right there is a job that everyone enjoys that fits with that job and you know and should have all of the benefits that are you know reaped and i know that sounds very very um a uh, communist or socialist kind of a thing. That's not really what I'm saying. I'm saying that if everybody has their ba basic needs met, okay, there's basic needs, okay, then the, 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 the currency, what is the currency then if you don't have money and you don't have barter? Um, you know, a barter system, because regardless of, regardless of what we're doing now, whatever the currency is, it's still currency in the terms of I'll trade with you. And then I, it's, it's an, ex, you know, it's an exchange, which I think is really great. And I think, you know, in the terms of capitalism, that is, that is too. Uh, but you know, there's, there's a benefit, there's a gain in terms of quality of life, which needs to be the currency. And, um, if your quality of life is improved, and, um, you know, if you're a member of society and you're, you're supporting that particular society, I'm not talking about in a sense that everybody gets equal distribution, no matter what they do. No, I think that the thing is, is that you're not just left to, to the dust and everybody just does something. And, you know, and that, that fosters corruption because people are looking for something or they're looking to feed and need a, a whole that money, sex, nothing will fill ever. Ever in the history of mankind, when has any of that stuff satiated the need to dominate or feel superior because of a feeling of lack? That is why wars happen. That's why divorce, you know, people murder people. It's a feeling of lack and a fear of loss that um, it's not FOMO, it's FOLO. Fear of losing out. Like losing, fear of losing, fall. F O L. And, uh, the fear of losing things that are really meaningful to you, not things you're missing out on, things that you could be doing, things that really matter. That fear of loss, that's, that's traumatic, you know? So that, those things prevent us from doing things. If you don't have a fear anymore of losing, that no matter what you do, you will benefit and gain because experience is the real currency. Value is in what you can give back not in what you can receive because if everything all of your needs were met everything that you ever wanted to do you can do and now that is happening in the world of the internet everybody can travel everybody can do these things everybody can be be aware and in the know that that is going to even the playing field so really what is the benefit of having money if everything you can do is already taken care of I mean, that's a crazy thing. You have the best of everything, best healthcare. So the people say, well, what is your motivation to do your job then if you don't have money? So what I'm saying is the currency is in quality of life, not in what you hoard. And I think that is the problem with the financial situation now is that it takes, all right, you spend all of your life trying to acquire so that you can have a quality of life instead of focusing on creating a, qual a life that is of quality. Because, you know, the, the, the system is stacked for benefit. But the thing is, is that everybody can benefit with an all benefit system. Where, you know, and I'm not saying get rid of money and all these things, but this is, this is the way of thinking in terms of saying that money is just a temporary thing, representation, uh, whatever you want to call it. it you know, it's, it's, it's what we trade, but we're trading. We're not serving ourselves or serving others. We're serving the system. You know, and I think when we serve not just the system, because I think that's a, a system of blinders, you know, in whatever relationship, it's sort of a conditioning for that, that system to work. Uh, this system that we're leaking was like, if I had a platform, if I was to run for office, I think this is hysterical. If I was to run for office, I would have my platform would be uh, prison reform number one. Education, education reform, which goes into that too. And I think education system, dude, number two, education reform. Um, you know, I mean, the idea of public service and the idea of benefit. I mean, the real is, uh, incentives that government should be doing is the incentive to do, um, to do charity work. 
uh, that is the incentive where we should be putting like if social programs because then you have people that are taking care of those things you know I mean whether they be tax benefits in, in whatever form that motivates a society to do things um, if we work on making those things I, I think that motivation um, those emotional connections towards wa wanting to do good will actually do that now there's a there's a great thing about talking about it but your actions matter when you have the ability and i think this is important you can't always make a choice because you have to take care of yourself but when you have the ability that is when you're at your best self that is when you have to be cautious and and recognize that yes life is good and you can't like be scared of it being bad but you have to say okay now that everything's good i really am able to make choices not out of a place of desperation but I have a chance, a, 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 a representation of self, of what my values are given the opportunity. <laughs> and I think that's a real important thing is like, you can't always be your best self. Um, I know right now in my life, I can't be, be somebody who can be dating because I'm not my best self. If I was to do that, that would just be filling time. And I have no more time to waste. I've wait, I, I feel that I'm a little bit behind, but it's not so much that I'm behind. It's like now I'm just getting serious. And I know that, uh, you know, you, you know, I, I see time now as it is. And I see every opportunity I get up, I work from day to night. I mean, I'm on unemployment, so I am taking this opportunity to work and find my job by the new social means, which is social media, which is marketing yourself as a brand. That is your resume. That is how people will see you and perceive you. It is all perception. It is all a representation. So if you, if you present yourself, the presentation, how everybody measures themselves, which is on social media, which is how people communicate everything. If you can communicate well and you look good on social media, not your following, but how you function, then you're going to be able to succeed um, because you're perceptive. And that perception may, you know, may be known or not known, but they say that you have an ability given the tools to succeed. And I think exercising that skill and craft is important. Um, so I'm going to leave you with this, uh, Dan Victor does my, I'm Dan Victor. I'm a bipolar artist and I'm seeking new ways to help uh, others, uh, find employment online so that they can live a happy and fulfilling life, uh, artists especially. And I, I, I think, um, I'm, I'm really built on the fact that I want to, I want to bring peace, internal peace, because I believe that's the way to, um, keep people from abusing and, uh, and people from being victims. I don't think anybody's never going to want to seek advantage. There's always going to be, I don't know, maybe that's just public hysteria or whatever it is that our, our culture supports. But, um, when people are given what they actually need, which is fulfillment, the ability to take care of themselves, their basic needs, taking care of food, shelter, ability to sleep, you know, it just, just not, not be treated as subhuman. No one is subhuman. You are a human being. You are deserving of love and you should not have to be any kind of way so that you can deserve love. You deserve it unconditionally. You should never have to barter for someone's love. They don't love you if you have to do something in order to get something from them. That's not, you know, I mean, the thing is, is it's confusing because there's a lot of people who get things from other people. And, uh, they, <laughs> and they, uh, they, they feel guilty because of that. Uh, they feel guilty. Well, they are giving me things, but you know, it's scraps compared to what actually people do. This is not what they have to do or what somebody should do or what your expectation is. So this is what people do that care about people. If you are in a certain situation, you are in trouble. These people who care about you will do or do not this. Or, or this is what they do if they do not. There is no, there's a very clear line and sometimes it takes a situation of extreme uh, to, to know who the people that have your back and who don't. Um, and it's just a measure of not in how you feel, but in how you see how they affected the situation that was possibly life-threatening. In my case, it was a suicidal uh, situation. I was on a bender. Uh, it wasn't a bender. It was actually a... Um, uh, manic decline um, after certain life situations occurred. Uh, you know, I'm not 
a proud or unproud, it's a situation that occurs with somebody with my, my condition. That's why I want to bring attention to bipolar awareness, uh, especially, but mental health uh, in general. Uh, check out NAMI, N-A-M-I. Check it out down below in the comments. I'm going to put that down there once everything's sorted. Uh, also, um, uh, leave a comment if you uh, feel anything, you're an artist and looking to uh, help yourself find a way to deal with, uh, you know, finding work. I think you have a lot of opportunities. Let me help you. I'm trying to finish up real quick. DV does, danvictordoes.com, dvdoes.com, uh, D Jason V, uh, at D J A S O N V uh, on Instagram, and uh, Dan Victor Productions here on YouTube and on uh, Facebook. Uh, so, so anyhow, those are my plugs. I also make t-shirts. Please support me by buying my shirts if you like them. If you don't, that's fine. If you can't afford it, that's fine. Just please check them out. And if, if, if somebody you might know likes them, that would, that's all I ask. I'm not trying to get you to buy anything or give you more content. I'm going to give you everything that I know because I believe that that's how it works. You know, you pass the, you pass, you pass it along, pass the duchy to the left. You know what I'm saying? And that's how everybody's happy because everybody gets their stuff taken care of. You take care of your head, take care of your heart, and remember, love yourself. That's the best thing that you can do. So thanks for checking in. Um, I'm Dan Victor. I'm bipolar. I'm an artist. And uh, hey, thanks. I love you guys.